Hey guys, so we've been talking about um, function machines and we said something didn't we about if we wanted to go backwards along a function machine we had to use um, inverse operations and actually an inverse function is kind of like that, it's, it's the reverse of a function. So let's, let's have a look at this, um, just bear with me for a bit and then at the end we'll throw in some numbers and hopefully it all kind of all makes sense. So um, let's say I have this function machine here. I take in a number. Let's call it uh, let's call it the number n. I times it by ten and I add one. So when I get my output of this on this function machine, it's actually going to give me um, well, it's going to give me ten n's here, isn't it? And then I have to add on one. So my answer will be ten n plus one. Okay, and I could write that algebraically. I could say whatever my number is, um, the answer that I get is 10 n's plus 1. So 10 of my number plus 1. Now I could um, do the opposite of all this. I could do what we call the inverse function. So for the inverse function, notice that now I'm actually going in reverse. It's so all my arrows are going back to where we started. Okay. So now. Um, let's let's just see what happens. So, so because all the arrows have flipped around, this is my input on this side now, and this is my output. So let's see what happens if I put in the number n. So I put in my number n. This could represent any number. I put it in. I take away one. So we'll have n take away one here, and then I need to divide it by ten. That whole thing and then divide that whole thing by 10 and that's my output. Okay, so if I was writing that algebraically then we say whatever our number is that we put in, the number that we get out is going to be n minus 1 divided by 10. Now you might look at that and think, hmm, are those opposite? You know, I'm a bit confused here, you've used the same letter twice well, let me um, let, let's try putting a number in and see what happens, and, and hopefully you'll you'll be happy with this. So, uh, let's say I put in the number two into this um, function. When I put in the number two, I have to do ten times that number two, and then I need to add on one. So that actually gives me an answer. If I put in two, it gives me an answer out of twenty-one. Right now, that number there, that that twenty-one. Let's see if we can pop that into our inverse function and see what happens now. So now we're going to say, what if n is 21? So I'm putting my number n as 21. What happens to this? So we're going to do 21. Then we have to take away 1, and then we divide it by 10. So that gives me an answer of 21 take away 1 is, is 20. 20 divided by 10 is 2. And notice that's got me back uh, back to where I started, hasn't it? So I put in a number originally into my function, uh, a number into my function uh, machine here. It gave me, me an answer of 21. And so I took that answer 21 and put it into the inverse function machine, and it should rejumble it back to where it started. And it has done that. It took me back to, to the number 2. And so this function that we've made here uh, is an inverse function. It's the, it's the reverse of the function that we started with. Josh Matz.